Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, socialing the distance. We're with Jeff Cohen this week. He's a world-class track and field photographer. You have seen his stuff if you ever even looked at Instagram. Uh, and I put it up on Twitter and everything. Jeff, great to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks. And you're in nice, warm Santa Monica, you know? And uh, are you near the beach? I am. I'm a few blocks from the beach. I'm uh, very fortunate. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that area. Yeah. I used to go down to uh, Santa Monica Community College and uh, had some buddies who worked out down there and and it was a lot of fun. So Santa Monica rocks. Yeah, um, I went there too. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. So how did you get into sports photography? Oh, wow. Um, well, let's see. At around uh, four years old, my my dad gave me a camera. And um, also, I've been going to track meet since I was in diapers. Really? Uh, cool. Yes. So um, I just kind of meshed the two. But for the sports photography, um, I mean, I've always sh shot pictures all through ever since I've had a camera and my friends skateboarding to volleyball to basketball, surfing, this and that. Um, with the track and field, though, I always shot pictures. I've been to a lot of um, world championships and Olympics over my lifetime. And I always, uh -huh. I always shot photographs from the stands. And um, I was I was watching the photographers on the field, mm -hmm. and always thinking like, why are they at the finish line? <laughs> I want to photograph. I want to see what's going on when the hur the hurdlers are getting ready, or the pole vaulters are getting ready, or this or that. And I said, yeah. I said I want to see that photo. I can do that. So I started doing it. And I started getting more into into it. And my website and um, got credentials and started getting more into the sports uh, professionally. When did you start doing stuff for USA Track and Field? When, when was that? Excuse me? When did you start shooting for USATF? Oh, um, 2012, 2013. Wow. Um, relationship and back and forth. Did you, um, let's see. What's the, the part of being a sports photographer that most people don't know about? Well, I always say it's the best seat in the house because yeah. you get to go anywhere. You get paid for it. Yeah. Um, you get to go anywhere. The athletes, the officials, they they come in and out at a certain time. Photographers get to go where the action is. They get to go in the prep room. They get to go before and after. Um, it's just the access is incredible, and it's, it's such a gift for me because I'm uh, such a track fan. Um, that's what I would say. People don't realize the access and how amazing it is as, as a sports fan. What, um, who is the coolest athlete you've ever photographed? <laughs> the coolest. There, there are so many, um, <sighs> well, it, with our track, we're like, you mostly track and field. So yeah. I mean, there, I mean, there's Allison Felix, there's Sam Kendricks. Um, I mean, there's so many. I, I really, I really appreciate the time I have on the field and and connecting with the athletes. And from as you know, when you go to the meets, you travel on the shuttles, you're in the hotels, you're yeah. on the warm up track, you're on during the competition. When I have, you know, close relationships and those special moments with the athletes, I mean, they're all. I cherish them all and it's a really it's special to me. So we're like the coolest, there's, there's so many and I, I consider a lot of them my friends and okay. to share moments with them. What is, um, when you're trying to get um, an unguarded moment, when do you see those most? Is that when people are warming up? Is that when people are just being pretty casual, just kind of getting their stuff together? Um, how how do you go from giving us the viewers <laughs> this amazing insight into what's going on? Because a lot of times, looking at your photos, I feel like I'm right there, you know. And that's I think one of the cool things about what you do. Um, yeah, well, um, thank you. Um, 
I think I've thought about that a lot before. Like I, I really, again, me and Bre- me brain brought up, brought up on track. Yeah. And from an infant track athletes were my heroes from day one. Um, I, I played uh, volleyball. I played soccer. I'm, I love team sports. I, I don't know. I, I just get in there. I, I feel the energy. I feel the essence of the sport and I want to capture that. And when I'm on the field and I see someone focusing right before their race or tying their shoe or getting their mantra or when they're winning or having a difficult moment, I feel that I get the chills. Mm. I get the energy from it. And I just focus in on that. And there, there are times, there are many times when it's a little too personal, too close. And I, I, yeah. I know better and I step away. Uh huh. And, or I have photographs that I don't think I should release because it's not, it's a sure. private moment. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, it's just me and my, my head, my, um, it's where I'm, I gravitate towards. And I, it's my connection with the sport and the athlete as a, as humans. And I kind of, I feel it. Was your, were your parents athletes? Were they coaches? Were they fans? My dad ran track in high school, okay. college, and he was okay. one of the better um, milers in uh, in Los Angeles. Cool. So he brought me into track and always would track me. And she'd tell me about, you know, the, the huge, the Coliseum track meets back in the 60s with 100,000 people. And yeah. we were going to all the indoor meets from San Diego to LA. Mm-hmm. He, went, he took me to dual USA, USSR dual meets in Berkeley. Wow. We, I went to the first world championships in Helsinki with him. Oh, um, cool. so we really like traveled around and, um, yeah. So I, and he, he, uh, he runs today still, he's 83 and he runs oh, that's three, awesome, man. He runs three miles a day. Wow. So, uh, that's yeah. Cool. Just, cool. you know, keep moving. Oh yeah. No, no. Um, what are the, um, is it harder to shoot an indoor meet than an outdoor meet? You definitely, I, I, there are some more challenges with mm-hmm. lighting and backgrounds and access. Okay. Um, again, I, I try to do my best and uh, they are, they do have, there are some more challenges, but I say, bring it on. <laughs> Let's go. Sure. <laughs> what what has been um you've obviously had you've been to world championships you've been to small meets been to big meets do you have any unfor- do you have an unforgettable meets or meets that just stick in your head i uh one of my uh pretty powerful meet was london world championships mm-hmm. that was amazing just the stadium the the enormity of it the grandeur um, some of the photographs I've got from, from it. Um, every meet has a different flavor for me, but London sticks out. Um, there are other meets as a fan where it sticks out LA Olympics. Yeah. Um, S- Seville world championships, um, yeah. Helsinki world championships, the first one. And yeah. the second one too, where the rains and the wind came through and the, the umbrellas were blowing all over the, <laughs> the field. Um, I, I also love small meets, smaller meets like Mount Sac Relays, mm-hmm. where, you know, you see the track and field community with the kids and the and the gold medalists all together and sitting together. And it's pretty amazing for me as a as a track fan to just experience that. And I just I love it. What is um, do you photograph road races as well? I have, but I don't that often. Okay. I've done some marathons before and mm-hmm. 10Ks, but I have, I had not that often. When you're shooting the short relays, how do you get the action? Because it's so quick. <laughs> well, I think with the sports photography, you try to anticipate what's going to happen. So before every race or relays, I try to think of something like a different angle or something mm-hmm. where something's going to happen, a handoff with a good background and hopefully other runners not blocking it or I just, just knowing the sport and the surroundings, I just try to think of something different and I set up before that happens. There's um, I kind of go on the fly. Juggling with the TV crowds 
or the TV crews, I've observed has got to be a challenge because those guys, you'll be all set up and those guys will walk right in front of you. And a big thing, how do you, do you just bite your tongue? Because there anything that you can do when that happens or you just wait for your moment? I adjust. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I adjust. I know I, I don't get in front of the TV cameras mm-hmm. and a lot of the, a lot of the TV people aren't really, they, they come in as a job, like, the day before they might be working on baseball and the next day another basketball. So they don't really know track. They're doing a job. They have um, people speaking their ear, go here, get this. Yeah, so yeah. as a still photographer, you're, you're, you are going to have TV people running in front of you in front of your shot. So I don't really have, I'd rather get the shot and just work around that rather than sit there and, and err, you know, on the TV people. So, um, yeah, I just adjust and move around and uh, get my shot and move on. What's the challenges with dealing with um, the um, a shot the shot put? Um, well, there are a couple. There's some different shots you can get with a shot put. You can get it from um, right from the circle from mm-hmm. behind them. You can get a shot sideways. You can get shots from the stands. You can get from the outfield. Now, really, it depends on a lot. It depends what's going on in the field. It depends where the TV cameras are, where the officials will let you to be. Um, it again, it's just mostly. I, I've been I've been out there. I feel so comfortable out there and and moving around that I kind of adjust and see what happens. You never know. Where, where the officials will let you be and they won't be. Yeah. And what will be in a crazy distracting background, or if there's a race going, if there's some other hammer or javelin going on, or what's in your, what your normal shot is blocked now, you can't take it. You just have to dance around and choose your equipment and um, try to get a shot. But one thing I do stress is that mm-hmm. to a lot of the new photographers is always ask permission of the officials. Mm-hmm. And always let them know where you're going to be and what you want to do because they're they don't know if you're going to jump up or run around or be dangerous. Yeah. So they hey don't get here. So I always ask the official. I say hey, can I sit right here? I will not move. And a lot of them know me now, so it's a lot easier. But if you don't do that, they'll say hey, we can't be here because you, they don't know if you're going to jump up or spook the athlete or jump up in front of a camera or be in a dangerous situation. So I always, always ask the official if they say no, I say, okay, thank you very much. And I move somewhere else. But it's, I mean, it's a huge lesson. I see a lot of people, you know, messing that up. So how do you deal with, um, like when I'm, the London championships, I, I can recall photos when, especially at the finish of the hundred at the, like you said, at the finish line, there are just scores of photographers. And I know that you have to negotiate. You, you'll get a certain time that you'll wear your bib out on the field. Um, how did, how did you do, you, how much time did it take you to get good positions so you could take good photos? Wow. Um, Well, just through doing it and being respectful and nice to people, you get more access. Yeah, yeah. The photo chief trusts you and knows you're not going to mess up because a lot of those places that you're going, you can, you know, hit your shutter early and, and cause a false start. You could get in the way. You can yeah. get injured. You can injure somewhere else. So it's really – it's it's amazing to me that that more mishaps don't happen because – it's just there's so much stuff going on. But the more that I do it, the more they trust you. They know they 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 know you know what you're doing. You're not gonna jump out or sure. do certain things. Now with the like the hundred meter finals or what have you, and the whole lineup and the hundreds of photographers at the finish line looking out here, there are set positions for big agencies like the Reuters or AP or Getty, what have you. Yeah. And uh, those are taken, those are done. There are other other freelance or smaller um, uh, like journalists, what have you, photographers. You it's first come first serve. Yeah. Now I I I generally don't like to be in that area 
of just mm-hmm. looking straight on finish line. I like to get sure. something different. So I really don't um, sit in that, in that, in those areas. I try mm-hmm. a different angle. I mm-hmm. pop in every so often, but I, uh, I move around because I, I see 50 people getting the same shot. I don't want that shot. When uh, in 2000, was it 2018 uh, U.S. championships in lovely Des Moines, and we had the changes in the weather um, from thunderstorms to great weather to foreboding skies. How do you juggle things like that? Well, I just adjust and go with the flow. I actually embrace the challenge of Mm -hmm. something difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh, like it, it stopped. I have all, I have my rain gear. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. I have my, I have my rain covers for my cameras. I don't know where they're going to switch the pit or switch the start or this and that. I, I'm just, I just go with the flow. Nothing else I can do. I can't sit there and complain. I'm just, I'm ready to go and excited. And like, what else you got? I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> the, uh, um... it, it's kind of fun during those times when, it, when, when, you know, we had it into one, I think we had like, there's a tornado break and they stopped yeah. for a couple hours, what have you. And I got to, I went in the practice area where the athletes were just hanging out for a couple hours. And I got to hang out with them and talk to them and took some pictures. And, and, um, so I, I love that stuff. Do you have to ask athletes permission to take pictures in, uh, the non-public times? Like, you know, when everybody's warming up and stuff like that, will you go up and introduce yourself and say, Hey, I'm going to take some pictures. Is that cool? Or what's the protocol? How do you have to do that? Absolutely. Um, if I don't know them, like by, by now I'm friends with a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, I, I always walk up to somebody I don't know and Hey, how are you? Jeff Cohen. That, nice to meet you. And um, usually they know who I am and we talk a little bit and say, Oh, do you mind if I take some photographs of you? Oh, go ahead. Or, you know, I, you can kind of feel the vibe if they're really in the mode and they don't want it. Yeah. But I'm never, I always, if I'm, if I have a question about it, I never snap pictures. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be that guy. It's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always respectful. And that's how I believe I get a lot of the access that I do. And that I don't, I don't put out embarrassing or bad pictures that are yeah. not necessary. It's not necessary. Mm-hmm. And um, I wouldn't like that. Um but yeah, I always ask permission with the athletes, with the officials, with everybody. It goes a long way. That's my, that's a big lesson that be respectful, be nice, ask permission always. And it gets you far, very far. Anybody can take a photo. The new iPhone camera has three, you know, lenses on their thing and the stuff's pretty good. And even I can't screw up most of the stuff, but um, what really makes a good sports photographer? What makes a good sports photographer? Well, there's a capturing the moment, being able to anticipate and capture the moment. Some people are more into the more kind of newspaper magazine, capturing the finish, capturing the Mm -hmm. the glory, the emotion. There are other ones who are more into the artistic composition. There are people into both. I mean, it's just about, get in a, a nice photograph that you can some that it will convey that the emotion and the feeling. Um, it's about anticipation, what you think that the action is going to be and hopefully you get all the settings right and you capture it. I love looking at your stuff on Instagram. Uh, it's a treat each day and the there's photos I'll see up and I go, God, I wish I had taken that. So cool. And it's not, it, the thing that I like about what you do is you'll get the picture of the athlete, but you get the spirit of the athlete too. And that's why I say there's a difference between someone who's got a camera and someone who's a sports photographer. Okay. And it's something that you love. Um, do you have, so I know like when you look, you're going back and you're looking at photos. So say you shot, you know, 500 photos from Mount Sac meet. And you go through and you go, man, here's 30 that totally rock, you know? Um, when you're, it, have you ever had the experience that you just take a picture and you go, this is going to be incredible? While I'm shooting it, as I shoot, as I hit the trigger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have those moments. I, I go, I'm like, got it. <laughs> 
That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And, and other ones I, I always, for me, I'm kind of, I, I shoot a meet and I'm not sure. Oh, I hope I got something, this and that. And luckily whenever I go back and look over my photographs on, on the computer, I'm always surprised. And I'm always, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a great one. Look at that one. Good, good, good. I, um, for whatever reason is, I don't think I shoot, you know, get that many good shots is when I look on after the computer, it's exciting. And mm-hmm. again, as a track fan, I get to go back and look at the track meet and, and that moments that I captured as well. And I just love looking at them That's because cool. I can see someone, you know, Tiana Bartoletta, you know, I can see it in her eyes and she's focusing before she goes to that jump or, you know, Mondo looking at it, you know, in a, in a moment, like talking to himself, kind of getting ready before the jump. And I can come back to that and like, look at that. I could, I yeah. feel it. Yeah. The, um, having been to so many track meets and, and loving the sport, um, I'm going to make you the head of world athletics for a day. <laughs> and what are the three things you would do to make the sport more visible? Wow. Um, well, more TV cover- coverage, um, hopefully more, more, more TV, more internet, more images. It's just, people have to see it to appreciate it. You know, right now we, in our world, we have, you know, we only have so much space that people are going to look at and so much time, everything's so quick. You have football, baseball, soccer, tennis, what have you. And people look at it and they zip off track. You know, it makes, it doesn't, I would love to see more of it. I understand there's, there's limited space out there, but track is, I believe is so marketable. Everybody can relate to it. Yeah. Everybody has run to the, to the tree, try to beat when they're a kid. Let's race to the tree. Let's, let's see how far, let's jump over this hole so you can go farther. It's all individual. We all know we've all done it as kids at least and know how to feel it. You can all relate. Then you have these, you, you see the athletes and you, you, you look at them doing the same thing that you did and you look at their physiques and it's just, you see the time and the effort that goes into it and such a respect and it's awesome. So I just think it needs to be more out there, more, more imagery, mm-hmm. more, you know, on, on the front pages, not just, you know, the Olympic final yeah, more yeah. TV and more newspaper, but it's just, it's, they're, it's fighting for, fighting for space on football or basketball, which pays a lot of money from their sponsors to be out there and it's shoes and soft drinks and energy drinks, that kind of stuff. Um, I would also love to see more meets in the United States. Um, like I said, growing up, there were, there were indoor pro track meets in Los Angeles. Yeah. There were professional meets at UCLA. Yeah. There were meets at the Coliseum. Now, again, it comes down to money and insurance and who's going to pay for it. But that's what I would like to see. I just, it's such a, it's a wholesome sport. It's, it's just, everyone, you can all relate to it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a big, um, what's the, uh, what's the challenge been for you with the pandemic? When was the last track meet you got to cover? <laughs> the last track meet I went to was actually Doha World Championships. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't do anything last year. I've, yeah. I've gone to some uh, training camps. I've done some projects with athletes mm-hmm. and I keep in contact and this and that, but I, yeah, with COVID, I really haven't gone around. I would love to have gone. I'd love to go to Europe, but then what's up with the quarantine? What, yeah. Where am I yeah. stay? What am I going to do this? Um, I would love to go to <clears throat> Polish world championships yeah, up. I mean the the relays. Yeah, I, is that going to? Am I going to be quarantined for two weeks? Is it going to happen? Are yeah. is Team yeah. USA going? I don't know. With the Olympics, so I'm all ready to go for the Olympics. I have my credentials. I got my place to stay. This and that. Yeah. yeah. So I haven't bought my plane ticket yet. I mean, I have a couple. I have a little bit of time. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? I'm going. If it's going, I, I'm going. 
Yeah. yeah. If I have to go quarantine for a couple, a couple of weeks, I'm, I'm going to Tokyo. So, you know, I, <laughs> I'd love to go, I'd love to go do, I'd love to go do some more uh, meets right now, but mm-hmm. it's just, there's questions in the air. But right yeah. now you have, um, I think you have indoor Atlanta today, right? Yeah. The Atlanta meets going to be on Sunday and there's, uh, the, the uh, Paul Doyle's putting on four meets with his American Track League, and then we're supposed to have the New Balance Indoor Meet, you know, which is always a good one. And still waiting to hear a little bit about what's going on there. Milrose has been canceled. U.S. Champs got canceled, and today the British canceled their indoor champs. Although they're going to do some pop-up meets yeah. where people can qualify to go to. Like I wanted to go to Torun in uh, in Poland for the European indoors. Uh, I went there in uh, 2000. Um, I've been uh, love seeing track in Poland, and it's just a uh, Poland's a lot of fun. It's very inexpensive, um, easy to fly out of Chicago to to Warsaw, and um, the beer is good and the food's good, so you can't knock <laughs> either one of those, you know. But yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, just you just don't know what's going on, you know. And uh, you know, it's. Uh, each day, each day we get a different story from Tokyo. Um, you know, the, the the Japanese aren't don't seem to to want it. They're concerned about having it. The government wants to do it now. They want to move it to 2032. So you know, it, it's a strange year. You know, I I didn't think. You know, um, I went. I was at the Dubai Marathon in January of um, of 19, and then oh no, January. January, January of 20. And mm-hmm. then I went to the New Balance Indoor and I was getting ready to go to Europe first weekend in February. And we got a call from friends at the CDC that said, don't go, you're going to get stuck. And so canceled. And really, you know, went, went to the, the Olympic trials down in Atlanta for the marathon. And if that had been one weekend late later, that wouldn't have happened, you know? Uh, I mean, it's just been, and the LA marathon, they were lucky. I mean, they literally, if it had been one day different, the LA marathon, which was on March 8th, uh, they'd have been shut down. So it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, how things go. And it's, uh, um, the, you know, there's been some pop-up meets and one of the, the thing has been is the dearth of great photos from those things. I mean, I'm going crazy because, uh, they, you know, there's, we see some decent photos, but we don't see the stuff like you being there, you know, and, and uh, some of your compatriots and it's a, it's a challenge. And then yeah, there's a small, small group I, that does it, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. I, I'd love to, if I can get there and it's safe and um, I'd love to go shoot some more meets right now. Um, yeah. I obviously not in Atlanta right now. Um, maybe in the future, I'm kind of hovering. I don't know what's up with this covid thing and yeah I'm, I'm, i'd love to go do diamond league so i'd love to go to europe sure you know and then we have we also have new hayward field we have a couple of meets coming there hopefully yeah yeah so i mean like right about now is about the time where things have to people have to decide what's going on yeah yeah i'm ready to go at a drop of a hat but mm-hmm. i just need a little more reassurance sure do you make your living as a sports photographer uh it's partly I do uh, real estate as well. I manage, really? I manage real estate as well. Oh, that's cool. And that's so, cool. So it allows me to, um, it helps my sports photography as well. That's cool. Because so, usually, usually, like if I go to a meet, I usually, I pay for my, I pay for myself in advance and I make money on the back end. So that kind of helps. No, no. Hey, look, it's, you, yeah. you find a way. I mean, it, the, the, being in track and field media, you know, people go, gosh, it's got to be exciting. Well, it is, but yeah, you got to pay those, those bills and all that stuff. And, uh, and that, that's the challenge, you know, yeah. uh, it's been the challenge, especially since the digital world happened. Um, there's more opportunities, but it's like, um, when, you know, when I was managing 40 print magazines, there was a big difference since than doing everything digitally right now. And uh, I think our numbers are bigger and people seem to appreciate it. And I love the day-to-day communication. And, you know, we do a lot of Zoom stuff a couple times a week, like we're doing with you. Mm -hmm. And our readers seem to love it. I think that there's, um, 
I think there's something that print does and print photography does that's that's amazing too. And I just want to see the best of both worlds, you know. Um, worked on a couple photo books and which I really thought were a lot of fun, you know. And down the road, I'd love to do those kind of things. And I mean, I look at your stuff and I go, yeah, I want that photo. I want that photo. I want that photo. You know, it's just like you, um, uh, you just capture the spirit, man. And that's the thing. Um, when, when people, when people ask you about what you're trying, what do you want? What do you want to express about track and field? How would you say that? What are you trying to get across from your photographs? Well, I like to share the essence of the sport and the athletes with the public and also bring, bring you in closer to on the field, to what I see, to what I'm feeling, to what jazzes me, to the emotions I feel. And I, love, I just want to share it with everybody. I'm passionate about that. Okay, I'm going to give you 10 athletes' names now, all right? 10. 10. I'm going to do one at a time, and you're allowed three words to describe them. Okay, we'll start. Allison Felix. Focused, professional, beautiful person. Sam Kendricks. Funny, genuine, powerful. Sandy Morris. Sweet, beast. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's kind. Okay. Harry's merit. He's also a genuine guy, but he's very, he's happy and uh, he's a lovable guy. Um, Ashton Eaton. Superhero. Cool, cool. Um, amazing person, athlete. Joe Kovacs. Bear. <laughs> like a big, big bear. Um, God, he's, yeah, he's just, he's a beast master. <laughs> a gentle giant oh. and smile. Uh, Ryan Krauser. He's another gentle giant, uh, cowboy. I'm just thinking biceps when I see him throw. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Deanna Price. <clears throat> uh, so I remember her. She's got an amazing smile. She's humble and like a, she's like childlike giddy when I think of her. It's just very cool. pleasant. Uh, Matthew Centrowitz. <laughs> um, Centro. <laughs> when I say, well, he's like, he's, he's, he's funny, but not like, like a class clown kind of thing. Kind yeah. of, I think great, uh, sure. joking. He's professional. He's a beast as well. Uh, Craig Engels. <laughs> Well, you got to say mullet. Yeah, yeah. Craig Nandles. What's the word? I'm looking up on that. Um, he he has a young young vibe about him, uh, and uh, meaning kind of. Keeping it kind of light, joking. Okay. And he's uh, 
He's an amazing runner. His kick. Vashti Cunningham. Vashti. Uh, fashionista. Yeah. Uh, amazing spirit and skateboard. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, uh, I have one more for you. Um, Shelby Houlihan. Right off the bat, I'm thinking Harry Potter. If you know her, little, <laughs> you know her Harry Potter. Uh, you get up close enough, you can see her little Harry Potter tattoo on her earring. Yeah. Um, her ice blue eyes, and when she is, she has a true beast. Um, super athlete. Cool, cool. Um, is it hard not to, as a photographer? You're sharing intimate moments with athletes, you know? You're closer to them than the millions who are the TV audience. And, and uh, is it hard not to um, have an affection for certain athletes or develop a, 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 an appreciation? Um, it's like through your photography, do you end up uh, developing a – are are getting an insight into athletes that the general public doesn't see? Oh, I absolutely do. And I try to share that um, without getting too personal. And again, I make me when I, if I feel it's not appropriate, I want, I don't do it or I put my mm -hmm. camera down or I walk away. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, like you're like by me being close to athletes and getting to know them, and them and being comfortable with each other and vice versa, mm -hmm. it allows me to become closer and be in a lot of situations where other photographers and other journalists can't be. Yeah. Because they, they, they know that I'm not going to put something out or embarrass them or what have you. I can just sit there and put my camera down and talk. Yeah. And we talk track and what hang out, whatever. Um, which is such a gift for me. Um, I do, sometimes gravitate more toward people that I know that I have personal relationships with. Sure. Like maybe, you know, I sat on the shuttle with them going to the track meet and they're out there going for the world record. And I'm like, we were just talking about their favorite coffee shop or something back home, whatever. And I'm like, Oh, that, let's go get this. Person. You know, it, it draws me to people. Yeah. I know and more of a connection. Um, you know, there, there's so many different variables, but it definitely like people I know and friends, I, my camera goes to them. A lot. Cool. Um, yeah. Well, Jeff, I, I've enjoyed your photos now for many years. And uh, thank you. I really wanted to thank you for giving us, you survived almost 40 minutes with me. So you did well. <laughs> I don't see the beads of sweat on your flying your, by. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I hope to see you at a track meet soon, my friend. Yeah, Stay you safe. As well. And uh, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. We're doing socially in the distance. We've had Jeff Cohen, who's a world class track and field photographer, just check out Instagram. You'll see his photos. They're magnificent. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Stay safe in Santa Monica, my friend, and uh, I will thank see you so soon. Much. Okay. Thank you. See you soon, Larry. Thank you. Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater. This is the epilogue of Socially in the Distance. We just featured Jeff Cohen. He is a world-class track and field photographer. Uh, Jeff's been around for a long time. Went to his first track meet, as he said, in diapers. His uh, his father and mother competed in sports, and his dad was a, uh, one of the top milers uh, uh, as a younger man in uh, Los Angeles. His dad's now 83, still runs three miles a day. And uh, Jeff splits his time between uh, managing some real estate and doing what he loves, which is sports photography. Uh, he was at the first world championships in 1983. He's been to many of them since then, been to Olympic Games, been to... Olympic trials. Um, I think he has an uncanny ability to capture the moment. Um, a great photographer, well, a good photographer gets you an image. A great photographer captures a moment, gives you a feel for the moment, gives you an intimate, an entree into an intimate relationship between the athlete and the photographer. Um, anybody can have a camera. Doesn't mean that you're a photographer. 
Um, and a great photographer is what Jeff Cohen is. He's, he's, uh, his stuff is, is masterful. Just go on Instagram and look at the photos he puts up. He's captured great images of Allison Felix, Sam Kendricks, Ryan Krauser, uh, Kenny Harrison, uh, just Mondo DePontis, um, just some amazing athletes. But he captures their spirit, their joy de vivre. Um, that's what makes a great photographer. And it's a lot of time, um, just like being a great athlete. Uh, it's John Powell, the discus thrower, the 1987 Olympic, uh, 1987 world champ bronze medalist, told me that it took about 40,000 turns a year to be a great discus thrower. It takes a lots of photos to become a great photographer. You've got to have a sense of placement, a feel for the, the subject, uh, a tie with the subject in some way or another. And you got to want to do it. And Jeff obviously loves what he does. Um, and his photos are superb. Um, I wanted you to get a chance to get into his head a little bit and, and see what makes a great photographer. This was actually the idea of our producer, Mike Deering. Mike really likes Jeff. And uh, he, uh, uh, Mike told me afterwards that this was kind of like a, uh, uh, a, uh, a mentoring lesson, just listening to, to Jeff talk. And, uh, and Jeff really has been to a lot of meets and cares for the sport, like many um, who give you a view into our sport. They care about the sport and want to see it more visible. We talked about the visibility of the sport and how to make it more visible. We talked about uh, photographing track meets and what makes a great track and field photo. And uh, we talked about some athletes. I gave him 10 names. He had about three words to describe them, and he did it. Did a great job. So uh, enjoy socialing the distance uh, with Jeff Cohen. He was a wonderful interview. And uh, I think as a photographer, a would-be photographer, it'll be a good benefit for you, too. So uh, take a chance. Get a cup of coffee. You know, get a nice Americano. Or, you know, my other Fred one, what is the red eye? It's the uh, dark coffee with two shots of espresso. You know, got to have that too. My drug of choice. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you again for watching Socialing the Distance. Thanks to Mike Deering for producing this wonderful program. Uh, we've been doing this most of, uh, for almost a year now. Uh, the, it was the brainchild of uh, Mike Deering and Adam Eater. They came up with the idea uh, for some programming for me last year. And uh, really, really enjoy this because uh, I think I get as much out of it as the as the athletes and the coaches. Um, I want you, our viewers, to learn something you didn't know. And I want you to get inside and see why these people care about the sport the way they do and why they compete the way they do. And I think we accomplish that most of the time. Um, it's an interesting medium. Um, I always say that if I really want to grill somebody, the toughest interview is um, 20 questions um, because I can control the interview. In an interview that's done via Zoom or done on audio or done on video, it's a very relaxed approach. Um, I use an approach called the Lenten approach. There's a writer that I care about deeply in uh, – Australian named Brian Lenton. And back in the late 70s, he did a history of Australian running and did a couple books breaking the tape and I think through the tape. And they were long-winded interviews with um, some of my favorite athletes, Ron Clark. Um, oh gosh, who else did he have? Uh, Roger Bannister, um, Steve Monaghetti. Um, and what he'd do is he'd put a six pack on the table and he would have at least three beers and they'd have a few beers and they would just bullshit for an hour or so. And that's the way an interview should be done. It should be a, a nice conversation between friends because that's how we learn about each other. You got to listen to, which is the hardest thing when you're doing an interview. It's something that took me probably, you know, 25 years to figure out. So anyway, uh, I have digressed, which is Michael knows I do all the time. Thanks again to Mike Deering for producing uh, Socialing the Distance. If you uh, like Run Blog Run, Please like us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, it allows us to make a little more money. And uh, if you really love us, then sign up on um, 
subscribe on YouTube. We did 369, not 393, not 333, 369 videos. See, Mike, I can remember. I wrote it down this time. Um, videos in the last uh, year. And uh, watch every one of them. They're a lot of fun. Um, really enjoy what we do. Um, the American comedian, philosopher, uh, art uh, fan, uh, Steve Martin, said one time that some people get paid for selling flare pens and I get paid for doing this. That's what I feel like when I work on Run Blog Run. And uh, thank you for all making it a reality. Uh, continue to watch. Get some of your friends to watch this and look at this crazy 62-year-old guy who's learning as much about track and field as you guys are too, okay? All right. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Exercise. Hydrate. Have a good glass of wine because I'm on a whole 30 diet right now and I can't drink any booze. So have a really nice like super Tuscan for me, okay? And then just tweet me a note about it. All right. Um, stay safe. Thank you. Mike, I'm finally done. Talk to you soon.